2K has released the gameplay blog for NBA 2K22. First, let's go over the new badges. There's a bunch of them. Fast Twitch, the ability to get off the floor quicker for standing layups and dunks. Grace Under Pressure, ability to convert standing layups more effectively. Limitless Takeoff, ability to soar from further away on driving dunk attempts. Mouse in the House, ability for bigs to finish over shorter players more efficiently. Unstrippable, ability to secure the ball better when gathering for a layup dunk in traffic. Chef, ability to knock down Steph-like off-dribble deep threes. Limitless Spot Up, ability to hit logo range threes off a catch and shoot. Lucky number seven, boost your ability to score when shooting early in the clock. Mismatch Expert, ability to successfully shoot over taller defenders on a switch. Whoa. Glue Hands, ability to make difficult catches and quicker branch out to a shot or dribble. Hyper Drive, boost the speed and effectiveness of moving dribble moves. Quick Chain, boost the ability to quickly chain dribble moves together. Post Playmaker, Boost the effectiveness of both shots and moves when playing in the post. Triple Threat Juke increases the effectiveness of triple threat fakes, jabs, and go moves. Ball Stripper, ability to strip layup and dunk attempts more effectively. Hustler, ability to get those scrappy 50-50 balls quicker than opponents. Menace significantly drops the offensive ratings of opponents when you smother them. 2K22 has 80 total badges now. Then 2K talks about a next-gen exclusive called Takeover Perks. These are modifiers that you can unlock and equip to strengthen your existing takeover abilities. And this is supposed to add another layer of strategy to how you compete online. The builder has been improved so that it's easier to see how many badges you've earned, what badges you're unlocking, what the attribute caps are, what the thresholds are, what the cost of each tier is. Another major change to gameplay is in finishing. They're adding a timing meter to alley-oops and aggressive dunks. When an alley-oop passes in the air, you're gonna have to press the shot button at just the right time to finish off the oop, if you're too early or late, you'll either smoke the finish or miss the catch completely. And then they're saying that this year you can force the bounce pass alley-oop this year. There's gonna be a button or something that lets you do that. On the dunking side, holding sprint and pulling straight down on a pro stick will trigger the aggressive skill dunks. When you have a defender standing underneath the rim, using the aggressive skill dunk feature will let you basically force a dunk attempt on demand as long as you have a stronger dunker and you have a bit of runway. It's tough to hit the perfect timing for these high risk, high reward plays, but it's so gratifying when you pull it off. So let me know what you think about adding timing to dunking. Jump shooting has a new meter. It's gonna dynamically resize the make window depending on if you're taking a quality shot or if you're taking a bad shot. So good shots, the meter will be a little bit bigger. Bad shots, it's gonna shrink when you're heavily contested. Or if you're shooting with a low rated shooter. Or if you're tired. I'm gonna call a cap on that. We're gonna have to wait and see, but we know they have badges in the game that help you when you're tired to score. And we know that if the game comes out and people are having trouble shooting, 2K is going to cave to the complainers. They do it every year. They boost the shooting every year. So I'm calling cap until I see a full year go by where they don't do that. So we'll see what happens with the shooting. Sounds great. All that stuff sounds amazing. Will they actually stick with it? When it comes to dribbling, they have 50 unique signature size up packages to choose from. And they also have 32 unique dribble sequences, which they're calling signature combos. Then they talk about the speed with ball rating. They're saying that last year, taller players could outpace shorter players with the same speed with ball. But this year they resolved that issue 
so that the smaller players are no longer lagging behind. Then 2K is also talking about defense, how they change the pick and roll schemes, the hedges, the AI. Just like the jump shooting though, every year when people complain about the defense, they're gonna tone the defense back. So I'm just gonna call cap on all that. Let's see if they actually have good defense at the start of the game and if they keep it throughout the entire game. But this is a very long blog, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can read it for yourself so you don't miss anything, but there's a summary of some of the most important aspects of the gameplay changes. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Are you excited for NBA 2K22? Two seconds left. That's the perfect excuse for this half court three abuse. Oh wow, Donovan Mitchell. He just dropped Tim Hardaway Jr. He in and out. I think Mitchell is mad because he hasn't played in the first three games. 